Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the Goldwasser Mikali encryption scheme. Uh, basically, it's a way to encrypt like zeros or ones, just like a single bit of information, so that anyone who's basically intercepting your message isn't going to know whether you're sending a zero or a one. And yeah, it's cool because it's probabilistic, which means you can encrypt something with the same secret key and get a different output every time you go. So like one time you encrypt it, it might be the number 63, and then the next time you encrypt it, it like the same exact message, you're encrypting a one both times, and then it will give you the number 54. And so that basically prevents people from making a, like a, just taking note of everything you send if they're somehow able to see it, and then like going back and looking at that later to try to understand what the new message is that you're sending. So it's something that's very useful for encryption. Uh, one piece of information you need to know before we go into like the meat of what we're talking about is something called like a mod. So basically, if you're taking a number, it's an operation. You can do 34 mod 10, and that will give you 4. Um, 25 mod 10, that gives you 5. So if you see there's like a pattern, basically, if you do something mod 10, you're just taking the last digit. So if you do 1,333 mod 10, you're still just taking the last digit, which is great. But if you do something like 13 mod 9, it doesn't give you the last digit, it gives you 4. So basically what it's doing is not just like looking at the digits, but actually you're dividing by that number, and whatever the remainder is, that's what you're going to output as the answer. So 13 divided by 9 is equal to 9 times 1 plus 4. So you can do basically any sort of number like that. So like, I don't know, we'll just give it a try. What is um, 45 mod um, 11? Does anyone know? Yeah, exactly. So you draw this thing, it's like, three lines, it's called the congruency. So 45 mod 11 is congruent to one mod 11. Yeah. So that stuff is not too hard, but it's gonna be really important later on. Um, the other thing we're gonna talk about is something called a quadratic residue. So basically, yeah, what you do is you have a number squared it's congruent to something within a modulus. So, you know, that's not too hard to understand. And what we call Q is a quadratic residue. That's just the name that we call it. And we can take a look, for example, at mod 20. So these are all the numbers from 0 to 19. You can see that basically any number in the integers is going to be congruent to one of these numbers, 0 to the number 19, mod 20 is when you divide by 20, basically the rule is that you're going to have some like remainder that is less than 20. So you've got 0 to 19. And what you can do is square each one, and that will give you some sort of answer. And as you can see, these things repeat. So you don't have the same, like basically you don't get the same number as you have before when you square it. But you do get some of these same numbers that reoccur. So only certain numbers within mod 20 are actually quadratic residues. These okay. numbers that are colored are the ones that have square roots. Can you give an example with mod 8, for example? Yeah. So if you go 0, 1, let's actually change that. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait, but not eight. This eight is congruent to zero. And so then we square everything. So this goes to zero. This goes to one, two. This one. What? Four. Four. Oh, four. four. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. Okay, this one goes to nine, but nine is congruent to one mod eight. Um, 16 is congruent to 0, and 
and 25 is congruent to 1, and 36 is congruent to 4, and 49 is congruent, what is it congruent one. to? The 1. one. A. There so. we go. So we basically have 0, 1, and 4 are the quadratic residues. And you can notice that there is a thing that, for example, 7 is actually minus 1, and 6 is minus 2, and 5 is minus 3. So like, so when you square them, you get the same residue. That's why you only have to count to 4, and then you can just stop. Mm. Can you keep doing this? So can you have quadratic residues of quadratic residues? Yeah, of course. You can do third power and fourth power. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so are there any questions about what makes something a quadratic residue? Basically, it's just a number squared within the modulus. Okay, so this is going to be like basically the first thing that we're going to prove. So basically, we have P is an odd prime, and we're going to say that every quadratic 